where we are building faith and we are sharing love. We thank you for coming out and worshiping with us on today, being a part of this New Year's celebration. We ask a couple of things, that you will keep your mask on at all times, over your mouth as well as your nose. If you need to use the restroom, there are restrooms in the vestibule. There are also restrooms to my left in the hallway, also restrooms to my right. Come on, this is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Although I may be young, the song says there are some things that I may not know. There are some places that I have not yet to go, but I am sure of this one thing. Yes, God is real. Is he real on today? Not only is God real, but God is a keeping God. And you have asked me, how, is, how do you know that God is a keeping God? Because January, God kept you. February, God kept you. March, he kept you. April, he kept you. May, he kept you. June, he kept you. July, he kept you. August, he kept you. September, he kept you. October, he kept you. November, he kept you. And here we are yet December. And God has still been a keeping God. For that we worship him. For that we magnify him. For that we come to tell God thank you for being a keeping God. I don't know why he kept me, but he kept me. Is there anybody here that's glad that God is still a keeping God? I know you can't high five your neighbor and turn to him. But just go ahead and tell God, God, thank you for still being a keeping God. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to the last day of 2021. Many things have happened, but we can all say that we have made it this far by the grace of God. We declare that this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We are grateful that you are worshiping with us today. You are welcome to be free in this worship experience. For those of you who are members and friends of New Hope Online, we encourage you to share this service. If this is your first time, Joining us at New Hope, please text NHBC Friend to 501 737 4040. Once again, if you are a first time guest worshiping with us here, we invite you to text NHBC Friend at 501 737 4040. We want to connect with you and get you information about what we're doing here at New Hope, where we are building faith and share love, sharing love. Please stand with me as we cover this service in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come thanking you, Father, for how you've kept us all 2021, Father. Father God, we come and ask now for a fresh anointing, not last year's anointing, God, but a fresh anointing right now, Father God, to reign, rule in this place right now, Father. We pray, Father God, that something is said or done right now, Father God. Chains will be broken right now, Father God. I pray right now, strongholds right now, Father God, will be set free. I pray right now, Father God, that something is said or done, someone may come asking, what must they do to be saved right now, Father God? Father, I pray that you touch the man of God right now, Father God, that he would bring a word right now, Father God, that would get us through this year, Father God, and start us on a fresh start. God, we pray right now, Father God, for Pastor Parks and his family, continue to uplift him, Father, as they lead this church in a mighty way. Father God, we just ask in all these things in your daughter's son, Jesus, now we pray, amen. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, clap your hands if you know who Jesus is. Come on, clap like you really know who Jesus is. Come on, we got to give God some glory in this place, y'all. We made it. We almost made it. It's about to be 2022. 22. I don't know about you, but I'm mighty grateful. And I'm grateful and I'm just thankful because God knows my name and we made it. Y'all, come on, can we lift the Savior up? For the Bible said, enter to his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. And we're going to give God the highest praise. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Come on, I came to help church this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, one more time. Let's give God the highest praise. Yes, God. We honor you this morning, Jesus. Lord is high above the heavens. Lord is high above the heavens. And this glory. 
the goodness. People are dying every day, every second. Can we just lift our hands while we can? Because we don't know today might be our last day. You might as well lift your hands and worship him. Forget about yourself. Forget about your next neighbor. Forget about the coronavirus. Forget about everything that is going around in this world. Can we just give God what is due to him? Just close your eyes and just think of where God brought you from. Hallelujah, God. And we just love you for that, Jesus.
God bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. God bless you. You may take your seats if you can. It's a great day to be alive. How many know it's a great day to be alive? Thank you. It's a great day to be alive. It is in him that we live, we move, and we have our being. It is because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Amen? Amen. How many are grateful to be in the house of the Lord on today? Amen. First, let me take time to welcome all of you that are here in person and especially to those of you who are in our virtual sanctuary we thank God for you come on let's thank God for those who are in the virtual sanctuary I know who you are we greet you from New Hope Baptist Church where we are building faith and sharing love if this is your first time worshiping with us here at New Hope. Would you be so kind just to wave at us if this is your first time. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. If it's first time virtual, just type in the comment section first time. If you're watching Facebook or YouTube, I promise you someone from the New Hope family will greet you with the love of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Listen, New Year's Eve is a big thing here in the life of New Hope. And we are grateful that God has enabled us to come here as a corporate body of believers, virtually and in person. And one of the hallmarks of our worship experience is when we get a chance to pause and listen to the testimonies of individuals who God has steadied his hand on their life. And on today, we are grateful to have sharing with us uh, trustee Marita Steele. Let's greet her with a great big New Hope welcome. She's going to share her testimony with us today. Come on, Miss Marita. Thank you, Pastor Clark. First of all, I want to thank you, Pastor, for allowing me this opportunity to share my testimony. The Word of God says that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the testimony of the believers. So it is my sincere prayer that in sharing my testimony that someone is helped today, someone is blessed, someone is encouraged in their faith walk. In May of 2019, I started having pain in my lower back. Didn't know what it was, so I went to see my doctor. She examined me and said, well, you probably have injured your sciatic nerve and she prescribed physical therapy. Went to physical therapy for about three and a half weeks, got a little bit better, but was still having pain. And so she ordered a CT scan. So I went to have a CT scan at UAMS, and they did the scan, and while I'm lying on the table, the technician walked around to, me, walked around to, uh, to the table where I was, and he said, Mrs. Steele, are you hurting on the lower left side of your back? And I said, yes. He said, well, I don't want to alarm you, but we see something. And we'd like to do another CT scan with the contrast to get a better look. So they did that, and they called my doctor and told her that they saw something that looked like a mass. So I went to see my doctor the next morning, and she walked into the examination room with tears in her eyes. And she said, I wasn't expecting this. And I said, well, what is it? She said, there is a mass on your sacrum, and it's pushing up against your spinal cord, and that's why you've been in so much pain. We don't know what the mass is, and we're going to have to order a biopsy. So I went to see a neurologist. He performed a biopsy, and it came back that it was lymphoma, which is cancer of the lymph nodes. My husband was with me. I called my daughter who was in Chicago at the time. I called my family. I called Pastor Parks. And I began to talk to God. And I said, God, I know you are a healer. Because that's what your word says. By your stripes, we are healed. We are healed. And since I knew what I was facing, I prepared for battle. 
and I went to the Word and I wrote down every single healing scripture that I could find. I placed healing scriptures all throughout my house. I listened to healing scriptures on CDs when I was driving in my car. I went to bed listening to T.L. Osborne's Supernatural Healing on Audible. What I was doing was saturating myself in the Word because I know what God says. I know what God has promised. And I made up in my mind that I was going to stand on his word. So I went to see an oncologist, and she ordered six chemo treatments over the course of 18 weeks, 18 radiation treatments over the course of three and a half weeks. And during this time, God was so gracious and so kind. He shielded me from a lot of the harsh side effects of chemo. I was never sick at my stomach. I never lost my appetite. I was a little tired, but I was still working, able to work every day, still going to the gym and everything, just still living my life. And I had asked God, during this, the course of this journey for two things. I said, Lord, I only, I want, only want two things. Please let Bobby, my husband Bobby, and my daughter Robin hold on to their faith no matter what. So God, don't, don't let them lose their faith. And I said, Lord, help me to walk this out in a way that brings honor and glory to you because I knew that this was not just about me. And that's exactly what God did. So I went through all of my treatments. Uh, had my last radiation treatment on February the 14th of last year. And then my doctor ordered a scan to make sure that there was no more cancer, that everything looked good. Yeah. Yeah. So I ordered, she ordered the scan, I had the scan, and went to see her to get the results. She walks in the room and she said, I wish I had good news. I heard her, but I didn't hear her. And I said, what? She said, there are two cells that are sitting by your bowels that I'm concerned about. We need to do a biopsy. And I'm going to be very honest with you. I said, wait, what? God, I've just gone through six chemo treatments, 18 radiation treatments, and I may have to go through this all over again. God, what's really going on? On the way home from the doctor's office, we scheduled the biopsy, and I remember Bobby just saying, babe, we're going to be fine. God is with us. He's going to bring us through this. And I'm sitting there, and I'm just, I'm just numb. I'm not saying anything. I got home. I went to my prayer room, and I fell on my face. I fell on my face and I cried and I poured my heart out to God. And in the midst of being on that floor, I said, God, I still believe. I still believe you're going to heal me. I still believe. But Lord, even if you don't, I'm still going to praise you. I'm still going to give you glory. I'm still going to bless your name because you are worthy, oh God. Got the results of my biopsy back, and this is right actually in the middle of the shutdown. So I had to meet with the doctor via telemed. And Dr. Burton comes on the screen and she looks at me and she says, I have nothing but good news. I have nothing but good news. We don't see any cancer. Everything looks good. Every single scan that I've had all of last year and this year has been cancer free. To God be the glory. God is a healer. I want somebody to know today that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask for things. Nothing. There is nothing. Come on, if you know God to be a healer, put your hands together and give God praise.
have anybody in the sanctuary that's seen God work? Don't you touch nobody, but just wave at them and tell them, I've seen God work. Over and over and over and over again. Somebody know he's Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. Jehovah Nisi, he's your banner. Somebody know that he is Jehovah Rapha. Well, look, come on, do you know him today? Bless the Lord. I'm looking in the faces of some members that I know we pray mightily. And the old saints would say it like this, I know what prayer can do. I found the answer in prayer. I tell it everywhere. Somebody knows prayer will fix it. Somebody may be in a tough spot. I want to tell you, just keep on praying. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. Praying is not always for you to move God, but prayer will move you. Bless the Lord. Listen, church, it's a great day to be alive. I want to tell you once again a couple of things. Church, we began our first of the year congregational fast, and we invite those who would like to partner with us on January the 3rd through the 23rd. Partner with us as we fast together. Amen. Amen. And church, we have so much to be thankful for, especially New Hope. Listen, we should still be on a high from Sunday. God allowed us to burn the mortgage on our Conway campus. Amen. Amen. And we are grateful for God has steadied his hand and his faithfulness has been evident in our ministry. Let me pause for a moment and recognize all of these distinguished reverend clergy who are here, clergy that are here, would you just stand? We're so grateful to have so many of our friends and friends of New Hope. God bless you. God bless you. Good to see all of you. Amen. And we have Reverend Dr. Philip Pointer here with us, pastor of the St. Mark Church. Y'all know that's my brother beloved who just preached us under the table on Sunday. Didn't he preach to us Sunday? Amen. And we're grateful to have him with us. And we're grateful to have one of the founding fathers, our own, of the Full Gospel Baptist Fellowship, Bishop Kenneth Robinson. Let's thank God for him. Grateful. All of our friends, Sister Danny Barlow, leading us in worship on today. We are grateful that she is here with us on today as well. Church, let's make our hearts ready to worship God in giving. <laughs> giving is worship and worship is giving. Those of you who are in virtual space, I especially want you to take part in this time of worship. I want to tell you, you're not peeking in and looking over our worship. You are very much a part of this worship experience. New Hope, you know I ask you each year to give a gift that is commensurate of God's faithfulness in your life. And listen, as a church, we know God has been faithful. And listen, we celebrate that our mortgage is burned on Conway campus, but we know we still have greater work to do here at North Florida Rock. Our House of Hope building is not paid off. I thought I'd remind y'all. Nobody said amen to me. Amen. Amen. But we, we want to end the year strong and thank you for your commitment in the area of tithes and offering. We are a tithes and offering church. Give yourselves a great big hand, New Hope. Thank you for your faithfulness, especially as we have navigated this pandemic. Listen, there are several convenient ways for you to give. There are several convenient ways for you to give. You can give through text. You can give through our mobile app. You can also send your gifts to our church office. If you are in person, there are QR codes on the back of your pews where you can give. Listen, we don't give because we're looking for a blessing, but we give because God has already blessed us. Amen? 
If you're in need, if you give the convention away through an envelope, if you need an envelope, simply raise your hand. The ushers will be happy to provide you with the envelope. If you didn't get the opportunity to share your tithes and offering on this past Sunday, you can share those on today. This is our last opportunity to give for 2021. Let's give, let's end our giving on a strong note, church. Amen? Amen. Are you ready to give, church? Repeat after me. My tithe is the debt that I owe. My offering is the seed that I sow. Lord, I trust you with my money. This is a sign that I trust you with my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give God praise. Let's get ready to give. And after we give in this song, it's preaching time. Church, it's preaching time. The Bible teaches us that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And on today, we are blessed to have in our midst Bishop Paul S. Morton, founder of the Four Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship, recording artist, author, a church father, if you will. And listen, those of us who grew up in church uh, in the 80s and 90s, like Dr. Pointer and I, we woke up every Sunday morning watching Bishop Morton. And listen, this is a high water mark in my ministry to get a chance to have Bishop Morton here at the New Hope Baptist Church. Amen. And listen, I simply ask you to open up your hearts and your minds to hear what God has to say to us through his servant in the person of Bishop Paul Morton. Amen. When he comes in, let's make sure we create an atmosphere that makes preaching easy. Come on, repeat after me. Bishop Morton, preach the word of God. Bishop Morton, preach the word of God. And we will be a witness. Come on, let's give God praise. The praise team is coming. Let's have church. Well, come on, put your hands together like this. We're going to have a little Sunday morning service worship. That's all right. How many of y'all know somehow I made it through it all? God brought us through. Come on, clap your hands like this.
I don't know about you, but I made it, I made it, I made it. Somebody just ought to praise them just because you made it. You, you made it, you made it. Woo! My God, that was powerful. Hallelujah. Woo! You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm telling you, that's, that, that kind of singing gets you right in the presence of the Lord. It is just good to be here today. We greet you in divine love to let you know that Jesus is still the answer for the world today, supplying needs and making ways. And I love him with all of my heart. I really, really, really do. I just want to take a moment to thank God for the set man of this house. What a gift, new hope you have. In the one and only Pastor George Lewis Parks, Jr. My God, my God, what a gift, what a gift, First Lady. We honor you and thank God for you today also. I am just so excited about what God is doing in this season. Even in a pandemic season, God is still God. And that's why somehow you made it. God's been good to us. I think about the old, uh, over 800,000 that have lost their lives, but I'm, I'm still here. That's why we're giving God the glory and giving God the praise. So we're just excited in this New Year's Eve celebration. As you're taking time out to honor God and to thank God for his goodness and for what he has done. And I appreciate, of course, it's just good to see one of our founding fathers today, Bishop Kenneth Robinson is in the house. Helped us get started in the 90s and has stood by our side and I just thank God for him. He is truly a blessing and we honor him. And oh my God, when I saw Dr. Philip Pointer in the house, what a gift. I got when I saw him, I said, Lord, maybe I should have studied a little bit more of my sermon if I knew he was going to be here. Uh, but uh, we appreciate you. All of these great pastors and leaders, I just want to thank God for you, the carriers of the gospel, and even see full gospel among you. I thank God for you. This is just exciting to see this today as we honor God and give him the praise for what he's done. Listen, we're going to get ready to get into the word of God. I believe that God has something for us today as we trust him. Our minister of music is with us today, Minister Jalen Smith, and also uh, Pastor Emmanuel Spurlock. He is with us today. But how many of you really need the Lord? I need him. I need him. Need you like the ocean needs the water. Or it will run dry. Need you like the stars above. Need the setting of the sky. I need you like tomorrow needs the hours of the day to pass by. Lord, I need you more than ever. So hear my humble cry. Now, Brother B.B. Winans wrote that for me, but my mama didn't sing it like that. My mama had another way of singing it, and my mother would just say, I need The old, I need thee.
time you just help me lift your hands and say, yes. Yes. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my, 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 my. Yeah. Lord, for these next few moments, use me. Lives will be changed. People will be delivered. We speak it. We speak it. We speak it. It's already done. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, we are ready for the word of God. We're ready for the word of God. And before I bring the word of God, we make a confession on how we receive the word of God. And I'll be coming from Galatians 6 and 9. But I believe that we must keep the spirit over the mind. That's the divine order of God. If it is the mind over the spirit, there is a disorder. Whenever there's a disorder, there's a breakdown. So I don't want anybody to leave here broke down. So we're going to make this confession. I need you to lift your Bible, your iPad, your smartphone. If you don't have any of those, just place your hand over your heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And repeat after me, if you will, if I receive this word, this kingdom constitution with my mind only, this word will be dead for me. This word will not help me. But if I receive this word, this kingdom constitution with the spirit over my mind, over my emotions, over my fleshly desires, this word will be life for me. Lord, I don't need religious form and fashion. I need life. Why don't you look at somebody with your mask on, tell them receive life. Galatians 6 and 9 simply tells us, and let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap If we faint not. I come to tell you on the last day of 2021, don't get weary. You may be seated. That's what I just want to talk about for a few moments. Don't, whatever you do, don't get weary. The word is let us not get weary in well doing, which simply means don't, don't lose heart, don't get tired, don't get weak, do not give in to doubt, don't give in to fear, don't give in to discouragement, rebuke and resist all opposition. Because the devil's job is to make you miss your season. This close to 2022, I just believe somebody's due season, your season is due in 2022. So I, I, I needed to share with you today so you won't miss your season because, because your season is important. This close to your due season, if you faint not. Oh, I, I, I know some are getting weary in this pandemic and we see so many things happening, but we will not faint because victory is on the way. Now, people of God, there are those who are trying, as 
we look at Paul's life, they were trying to make Paul weary of doing well. Paul, you don't have to do all of that. Weary of doing well. And that's why Paul had to come and he had to speak to the people of God in Ephesians 13 or Ephesians 3 and 13. And this is what he says. Therefore, I ask that you do not lose heart. I don't want you to get weary at my tribulation because you're going to find out that this is for you, which is for your glory. And he goes on in the 14th verse and says, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. What Paul is saying. Paul is saying, I have this ministry. Maybe y'all don't know what my ministry is all about, but I have this ministry that includes sometimes some ups and some downs, some good days and some bad days, but I do believe that all things will work together for my good. So Paul was letting the congregation know, I will not be disgraced. I will not be embarrassed by what I have to go through for Jesus. For my suffering is honorable and it's good for you. Paul was saying, watch my life because this is good for you because it's going to show you how to persevere in righteousness. Paul said, I want to be the example to show you how to make it through what you got to make through. Now, God's purpose, understand God's purpose in the things that we go through. God's purpose is to perfect you. His purpose is to complete you, to bring you into a new place of spiritual maturity in which you manifest the same characteristics of Jesus Christ. The same kind of faith, the same kind of love, the same kind of power. God's purpose is to work in your life by his spirit until you are changed into the exact image of Christ. That's what 2 Corinthians, the third chapter and the 18th verse tells us, but we all with unveiled face, no mask on, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Every day, I'm, I'm going from glory to glory. Every day, I'm looking more and more like Jesus. When I look in the mirror, I ain't looking like me. I'm looking more and more like Jesus. It's like your children sometimes. The older they get, the more they look like you. Well, I'm here to tell you, the more that you get into Christ Jesus, the more you look like Jesus. So Paul says, now, don't, don't get weary. Because you have access to the enemy's strength. Some of us don't know that. Why are you getting weary and you have access to the enemy's strength? Most people don't understand what the devil's power is all about. But really, it's no mystery. There are only two forces in this world. And the two forces in this world are God and the devil. Good and evil. Choose this day what you will serve. So here it is, people of God. This is the test so you will not get weary. Don't 
let the evil in. <laughs> you know, it's like going to the doctor. You go to the doctor, and I'm going to the doctor because I'm fainting too much. You know, you, you would think something was wrong with me. I'm up here uh, for 30 some minutes and preaching the word of God, but every three minutes I faint. And Pastor Parks has to have somebody come over, pick him up so he can get back up and continue to preach. The next three minutes I faint. Pick me up again. Pray for him, church. Pray for him. But I faint again. No, you would probably say, now you need to come and sit down. We need to see why you are fainting. You, ju you just can't tell me, don't faint. I have to have a reason why I'm fainting. So I, I go to the doctor, and doctor, I need to know why I'm having these fainting spells. And so the doctor gets to the problem and he tells you about your fainting spells and why you are fainting. So that's why I'm here today as Dr. Morton. If you're having fainting spells, I, I come to deal with your fainting spells so you will not get weary and faint. The call. The cause of fainting is getting weary. It's, it's the cause of fading and fainting. And this is what leads to the state of defeat. So Paul says, when I talk about fainting, I'm talking about do not take the evil in. Do not get weary or faint in well-doing. Because when you are doing good, you can't allow Satan to mess with your heart. I'm talking about when you get weary in any cause and we take the evil in that causes you to faint. I'm talking about even in this pandemic. Can't let the devil make you get weary and faint and you just break all the rules and just do what you want to do and people dying around you. Don't take the evil in. This day we're seeing racism like we've never seen it before. And it's easy, y'all, because I feel like knocking somebody down sometime. But I, 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 can't, I can't take the evil. I can't, I can't take the evil in because the evil will cause me to faint. So, so there is evil out there trying to get in the good things that you are doing when we see one race that thinks they're superior to the other race. Not because of their mind, not, not because of their ability, not because of their color. It causes the evil to get in. So the question comes, what evil out there is trying to get into the good things that you're doing? Now I'm going to make a confession to you today. It's the last day of 2021. And I'm going to make a confession. And the confession that I want to make today is I love red meat. I do. I, I, I confess it. I, I love me a good T-bone steak at Ruth Chris, Chris Steakhouse, at the steakhouse right here in Little Rock. I love it medium well. I love a good steak. Not only do I love a good steak, I don't even have to go that high. I will drive by Wendy's window and tell them I need a single burger with ketchup, pickles, onions, and mustard. Those who would go pick up my hamburger, they knew what I wanted. The single burger with ketchup, pickles, onions, and mustard. But in 2006, I was diagnosed with colon cancer. The doctor was telling me some things you have to watch out for if you don't want colon cancer. And one of the things he named was red meat. 
come on, Doc. <laughs> but it was going to be cancer or red meat. And so for me, this was in 2006 when I was diagnosed with cancer. But since 2006, I had to back off of so much red meat. In fact, back then, I backed off it all the way. I went back to the doctor and said, no, I, don't, I didn't tell you to back off it all the way because, you know, you need some red meat. It helps your cells. And I just started saying, hey, thank you, Jesus, every night. But I got the message. You want to live. Don't let the evil in. Now, red meat is not bad for everybody, but it's bad for people who got colon cancer. Pork chops ain't bad for everybody, but it's bad for people who got high blood pressure. I got sick of praying for a brother with high blood pressure. In fact, he was one of the bishops. It wasn't him, though. He was one of the bishops in Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. And every, every year, he would come to the convention. He would come to the conference in New Orleans, and he loved they sell, sell jars of pig feet. And he had to have pig feet. I don't even like pig feet. But he had to have pig feet. Now, he knew that he was going to run up his pressure. And at 2 o'clock in the morning, he's calling my room at the hotel at the concert. Bishop, oh, Lord, my head. My head is spinning. Lord, I, I, I said, what, 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 what did you do? You know, I had to have those pig feet. Now, I got to get up at 2 o'clock in the morning Go lay hands on him. But I told him, this is the last time. You're going to wake me up. You're going to let pig feet go or you're going to let me go. Now, you're going to have to decide which one. All I'm trying to tell you, whatever you do, you, you got to know what's making you weak. You have to know what's making you sick. You have to know what's making you weary. And when you understand what's making you weary, you bind the devil and say, I'm not taking it in. You're not going to destroy my destiny. You're not going to destroy my dreams. You're not going to destroy what God has for me. Just tell look at somebody and say, don't take the evil in. Don't take the evil in. Some people, you claiming even for the new year right now, I'm going to lose weight. I got to get back in my clothes. But you got to have chocolate cake every night. Why you got to have chocolate cake every night? Well, Bishop, it just keeps calling me. It keeps I try to leave it alone, but it keeps calling me. Well, you, you better stop answering the call if you want to get back in the clothes. Don't take the evil. No, don't take it in. So the question comes, what makes you weak? What makes you weary when you ought to be doing good? And I'm here to tell you that in this season, we should be spiritually healthy. And what's running up your spiritual high blood pressure? Been in the church 20 years and still get mad. Can't, can't stand nobody in the church. And just, just get out of groups. I, I ain't singing in the choir no more because she works on my nerves. What's running your blood pressure I come to speak to somebody and I'm here as Dr. Paul today to tell you if you want deliverance and you don't want to get weary, don't take the evil in. Because I'm here to tell you ain't nobody worth me missing my season. I will not allow people to define me. You ain't big enough you ain't strong enough to define 
my destiny. You ain't big enough. You ain't strong enough to keep me up all night long. So I'm here to tell you, hey, if you like me, it's all right. If you don't like me, it's all right. There's one thing I know Jesus likes me. And as long as I got King Jesus, that's enough. I'm here to tell you, people of God, don't take the evil in because what God is about to do, I believe in 2022, he's about to turn your situation around. Some of you, you were getting weary, but I believe God sent me here today to tell you, hey, don't take the evil in because God is about to turn it around in your life. I feel like preaching in this place when you know who God is I'm here to tell you I don't have time to get weary and faint not when I'm this close to my season not while I'm this close to my breakthrough how do you know you're getting close to your season? Because God sent me to tell you he's a girl to turn it around. He's a boy to turn it around. And they that wait upon the Lord shall renew your strength. You're getting ready to mount up with wings like eagles. You're getting ready to run and not get weary. You're getting ready to walk and not faint. I wish you just look at somebody tell them, he's turning it around. He's turning it around. He's turning it around. Now don't wait till the battle is over. I need somebody shout it now. Shout like your season just came through. Shout! 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 shout. Is there any money? Is there anybody you're glad about it? Yes, I can't give up. God has been too good to me. Yes, I can't give up. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul, my soul, my, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Ah, pray. Oh, praise him. Oh, praise him. Oh, praise him. I praise him. Don't get weary. Don't get weary. Whatever you do, I don't care what the doctor said. Don't get weary. I don't care what your employer said. Don't get weary. God, he's going to be there. God, he's fixing it for you. He's fixing it for you. He's fixing it for you. You gotta know it. You gotta understand it. I wanted to leave it 
the prescription with you. So you don't have to have fainting spells as you enter into your new season. But I'm here to tell you, your best days are ahead of you. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, whatever you're doing in this seal, please don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, whatever you're doing in this sea. Without me, don't do it without me. Now, come on, somebody help me. Just say it, just say it. Lord, whatever you're doing in this seal, please don't do it without oh my. Oh my, don't come on out me say, Lord, whatever you're doing in this scene, please don't. Oh my, oh my, don't do. Anybody need a healing, Lord? If you're healing. Lord, if you're healed, and I know you're healing in this season, please don't. Oh my, oh my, don't. Lord, if you're healing, Lord, and I know that you're healing. A blessing, Lord, if you're blessing, Lord, if you're blessing, blessing, I need you, Jesus. Don't do it. Oh, my, don't do it. Lord, if you're blessing. Just need you to say that last line. Don't do it without me. Say, say, don't do it without me. Say, say, don't do it without me. If I could just touch the hem of his helmet, I know everything will be all right. The music now say, Don't do it without me. Say, 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 Don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Come on, praise him in this place. Come on, 
praise Him in this place. I gotta catch a flight in a few moments. I gotta catch a flight in a few moments. But I just want to leave it with you because I know you're getting ready to go into a new year. But I just want to tell you, ain't no need to worry what the night is going to bring. It'll be all over in the morning. Can I say that again? Ain't no need to worry Woo! what the night is going to bring. It'll be all over. In the morning, 2022 is coming, y'all. In the morning, morning. <laughs> it'll be all over. In the morning, come on, help me sing. All over in the morning. That's why I'm not gonna get weary in the morning. Yeah. Thank y'all, thank y'all. It will be, it will be, it will be, it will be all over. Get weary. Not gonna get weary. We'll be, we'll be all over, all over, all over, all over, all over. It will be, 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 it will be. Could you just be seated just for a moment? I believe that our seasons are hindered by what we allow to get in. And so I find that so many times the world, they got it, they love what they do, they love where they go, they invest in what they do. We love to sing. We love to shout. But where the devil attacks us and makes us weak is in our giving. I'm just praying on this last day of 2021. Oh, if the church can break the curse of giving grudgingly and take the blessings of the Lord of giving into your heart, I promise you, he will bless you. I'm not going to bother you. I got to catch this flight in Delta. They don't love me that much. They ain't going to wait on me. <laughs> but I need you, if you have a $20 seed, this, this is the seed that I'm planting for 
just a seed as I get ready to go into 2022. But sometimes maybe I even backed off of my giving and didn't get what God had for me. But Lord, I'm putting you first. And I'm going to do this on the last day of 2021. And I'm here to tell you, when you plant this seed, your due season is so near. If you won't faint and not give. But if I give, the blessing is going to come my way. So I just need you. If you have, if you have that $20 seed, I just need you. I'll put my mask back on. I don't want to scare nobody. But if you could just drop your seed at the altar right now. I'm just believing that God's going to just open up some doors. I ain't got time for gimmicks. I ain't got time for games. I retired as pastor, and I'm retired as pastor, first of all, because I ain't broke. So I ain't here because I'm broke trying to get it. This is for you. This is, this is for you. This is, this is for you. It's your due season. It's your due season. It's your due season. I'm speaking it in your life right now. Online, you can give. You can give. I want you to trust God. I want you to believe God right now because God told me to get back up because somebody needs a breakthrough in this place. I'm speaking it over your life. This is the time for the church to rise up, to receive every blessing that God has for you. I speak it in the name of Jesus. Oh, I see some people. Your season is due. Your season is due. Your season is due. Your season is due. We ought to rejoice because somebody's got this. They got it. They got it. They got it. They understand it. They see what God is about to do. He's doing it. He's doing it now. He's doing it now. Yes, 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 yes. Let's thank God as they come. Come on. They're coming. Coming even from the overflow. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. The blessings of the Lord be upon you. Hallelujah. I love you. I love you. I love you. Hallelujah. Hate that I got to run. I'd like to spend some more time with y'all. I really would. Y'all have been a blessing. I appreciate you so much. Thank God for you, the blessings of the Lord over every seed that has been planted. I speak it in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, this is a seed as they get ready to go into 2022. Oh, God, you're about to do some amazing things because people trusted and believed. Just believe. Now, I, I, I forgot. I forgot because I, I, you know, I grew up in a preacher's home. I grew up in a preacher's home. My father was a pastor. And he, you know, and the evangelist would come and say, bring $20 seed. And I'd be sitting on the first row, just like, just like your children. And he'd say, I ain't going no lower than 20. And that made me so mad because I only had 50 cents. You going to stop me from giving all I got? So I, there may be some Paul Mortons in the house. You don't have the 20, but I want to give something because I need my breakthrough for 2022. So I'm talking to any Paul Morton out there. Let me tell you, this Paul Morton is blessed now because I still gave. And when you do it, I'm here to tell you, God will bless. So any Paul Mortons, any Paul Mortons calling you, calling you, calling you. This is your time to seed and watch God do it. Hallelujah. Love y'all. Thank you for spending this time and allowing me to spend this time with you. Come on, church. We're standing all over the building. Let's thank God for the word on today. Come on, let's thank God for the word on today. Just wave at somebody and tell them, don't let weary win. Don't let weary win. Today we want to stand on our feet. We want to give someone the opportunity to confess their hope in Jesus Christ. Secondly, unite with this church. You need a church home on your way to your heavenly home. If that's you today, today is a good day for you to respond to the word of God. One of the primary ways we don't allow evil in is being in biblical community. Being in meaningful community where we live out the principles of God's word and we also live with a level of accountability. If that's you today, unsaved, unchurched, today is a good day to come. Just say, excuse me, walk down the aisle or you can simply put your phone up to that QR code that's in your pew. For those of you who are watching virtually, you can simply hit that tag. Someone will be happy to share with you the love of Jesus Christ. 
praise team is ministering to us. This is your chance. This is your opportunity to respond to the gospel of Jesus Christ. friends and individuals in our concentric circle who are sick. And let's speak confessionally for a moment. Many of us are weary and tired. That's okay. I, I just speak for me. I'm, I'm weary, Bishop. I'm, I'm tired, Dr. Pointer. And I know many of you in this sanctuary those of you who are in the virtual sanctuary, that was a word for us. Don't get weary. I see you over there, Liz and Angela. Don't, don't get, don't get weary. Monica, don't, don't get weary. Ushers, don't get weary. Canard, don't become weary. Pastors, we navigating another scene that we've never seen before. Don't get weary. And even while you're weary, you have to make a confession sometimes. I don't feel no waste time. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. But I got up this morning saying, I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Just don't you touch nobody, but just wave at him. Tell him, I don't believe. He brought you this far to leave you. Come on, let's pray. Lord, we thank you today for your grace. We thank you today for your mercy. And Lord, we thank you today that you've given us testimonies that we've been able to hear, that we've been strengthened by. But Lord, we are leaving here on your word. Let us not get weary in well-doing. Many of us, we have to go back to work and we are essential workers. Some parents at wit's end. Some marriages seemingly is falling apart at the threads. Lord, help us to hold on to you when it seems like we have nothing else. Help us to hold on to the community of faith beyond pews and beyond microphones the essence of our faith help us to be the acts to people of god and then lord we leave this place and we simply ask that you dispatch angels to guard us to protect us to order our steps and our stops Lord, we pray for our friends today at the St. Mark Baptist Church. Bless them and all of their efforts for tonight. Bless Dr. Pointer in a special way. Lord, bless our friend, Bishop Kenneth Robinson and the Antioch family and all of their first of the year efforts. Bless them, God. 
Because God, we know that we're big enough to enlarge our prayer list. That we're all one big family in the body of Christ. Touch these pastors, God. Anoint their minds and their mouths. Give them a word if they're in person or if they're virtual. Help us, Lord, to lean on each other. And help us today, God, to trust you even where we can't trace you. And we leave here with faith, knowing that all things is in your hands. It is in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Do me a favor, do me a favor. Let me dismiss you by sections. If you don't mind, will you let me do